said relax. Me, did he just tell me to relax? We weren't even hyped though. I, I <laughs> we were like, I, like, we're good. Welcome to Try It News 360 for November 28, 2017. I'm Graylin Glover. And I'm Madison Johnson. Coming up next on Try It News 360, a closer look at elephant trophy hunting. And if there was a fire at your house, how trusting would you be of your fire extinguisher? We'll have a live demonstration with the fire safety officials next. President Donald Trump's decision to lift the ban on trophy hunted elephants imports has sparked a national debate. The president recently postponed lifting the ban, stating that the final decision will be announced at a later time. Chat News 360 reporter Ashton Keith has a National Human Society stand with the hunting of wild elephants. The Trump administration has proposed to lift the trophy hunting ban to allow elephant trophies to the U.S., but public outcry has forced the ban to be put on hold. However, Animal rights activists are still concerned that this ban reversal will still happen. Elephant advocacy groups are angry over the matter fighting to prevent this reversal. Robin Ganser, president and CEO of the American Humane Association, had this to say about the ban reversal. Their habitat has been absolutely destroyed by this ban. And frankly, the resources needed to ensure their humane treatment and protection are so very limited. Securing hunting permits for exotic animals is a complex issue. What animal lovers need to do is provide those hunters for elephants roam free to them the resources and incentives needed to provide for their security and their protection, rather than allowing them to rely on hunting revenues. The Obama 2014 ban is to prevent elephant trophies from being brought into the U.S. However, the Trump administration reversal will allow elephants legally hunted in Zambia and Zimbabwe to be brought over to America. If we work together with these local groups and communities, we can change their mindset from hunting to proper and humane conservation of one of these most incredible, intelligent creatures, the elephant. I went to the local communities and I went to the animals. Thank you, Mr. President, and have a good night. Triad News 360 will keep you up with all the updates on this ban reversal. The World Wildlife Fund has said this is a wise and welcome pause in the process allowing decision makers and the public to understand the details which led to the decision by the U.S. government. Paul Babs, president of the Safari Club International said, acknowledgeable sources around the world should recognize the importance of the application of science rather than the emotion to management of wildlife. President Trump has put off the decision until a later time. Fire took the life of a man in High Point, November 13th. When fire crews approved the scene, they found a fire that had spread from the garage to the house. Fire Department Battalion Chief Michael Foster said firefighters found the body as they searched at the building after the fire was under control. The heavy smoke from fires can overcome victims very quickly, and the firefighters remind everyone to have a working smoke detector to get out of the house right away and to call 911. Well, you all, Christmas is right here, and while most are getting ready to celebrate, a disaster is waiting to happen. The Christmas season has been known to produce a large amount of house fires. These fires have been product of faulty wiring and dry Christmas trees. Between 2011 and 2015, fire departments across the U.S. have responded to an average of 200 fires that were caused by Christmas trees. Christmas tree fires can easily be prevented, especially if the right measures are taken. But how safe is your house from the fire? Do you have a working fire extinguisher? And do you know how to work it properly? Joining us now live is Triad News 360 producer Molly Saab, along with reporter Zach Tucker and several of our staff who have been arranged a live demonstration. They are joined by experts from High Point Fire Department with helpful and possible life-saving tips you need to know how to get your family out of the fire safe. Zach? All right, well, thanks, guys. Well, we have some big news regarding your safety this holiday season. A company in North Carolina called Kitty has recalled 40 million fire extinguishers. And, guys, that's a pretty big deal, especially since it uh, spans um, 134 different models. That's right. And the models actually date back to the year 1973. So, I mean, that's a pretty big deal, especially with the holiday season coming up and a risk for fires, especially in your home. So, um, with that being said, we've got Captain Danita Lynch here from the fire department here in High Point to talk more about 
um, the importance of fire extinguishers. So, Captain Lynch, uh, thank you for coming on today. Thank you. And so, kind of talk to us about the importance of having a fire extinguisher in your home. Well, having fire extinguishers in your home are very important because uh, you want to have that first defense if you should have any kind of a small fire in your home because they are designed for those small contained fires. And um, you want to have that in the event that you have something very minor. Of course, you always want to call 911 first and get everybody out of the house. But if it is something that you can use it on, you know, absolutely we want you to know how to use it and, you know, uh, have it there available. So kind of take us through here. I actually have a fire extinguisher uh, with me right now. And kind of take us through, how does the fire extinguisher actually work? Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is to remember the word PASS, P-A-S-S, full aim, squeeze, and sweep. All right. Well, folks, we actually have a live demonstration that we're about to do. And we've got uh, one of our guys, Drew. He's going to come over here, and we're going to do a live demonstration. Pretty exciting times, guys. And, uh, of course, we've got Captain Lynch here with us. So, Drew, come on down. We're going to go ahead and uh, stand over here. All right. And let's see. All right, so, Captain Lynch, kind of take us through here. Uh, so, now Drew's got the fire extinguisher, and is he going to want to aim high on this fire or low on the fire? He's going to want to aim low on the fire. You want to make sure that you take it out at the base first. And, of course, remember, first thing, you're going to pull that pin. That's the first thing you have to do to get it ready to activate. And then as you aim, you're going to take the hose, aim it at the base of the fire. Then you're ready to squeeze that handle and sweep back and forth. Good. Are we ready to do it? We're ready. All right, we're ready. Wow, all right. <laughs> well, great job, Drew. So, uh, Captain Lynch, what would you say is a safe time to throw away maybe an old fire extinguisher? Well, fire extinguishers, of course, you need to make sure that they are uh, kept up to date. In businesses and things, we always have them to have them inspected on an annual basis. We don't have jurisdiction in people's homes, but we do uh, We do re tell them to have them inspected um, at least every couple of years anyway, take them to a fire extinguisher sales and service company. They're the ones who do those type of inspections. About every six years, they need to have what's called a hydrostatic testing, which basically they just take everything out. They put in a new extinguishing agent. They check to make sure hoses are good, the seals are good, all that kind of good stuff. Um, just to break it down, make sure everything's going to work properly. So that needs to be done at least every six years. If it's not done, we don't know what's in there. We don't know if it's hardened up and just not any good. So after about six years, it probably is on that borderline of whether or not it's going to work like it should. Well, I tell you what, uh, we actually have a fire extinguisher with us here today. I'll come over here and grab it. And look at this, folks. It still has dust on it. Uh, I believe that this fire extinguisher is about 20 years old. And according to Captain Lynch here, we don't know what's going to happen. So with that being said, Drew, here you go, bud. And uh, we're going to go ahead and shoot this off. And um, so what do you think? Quick uh, quick prediction here. You think it's going to shoot off, right? Well, uh, we're going to just let him uh, draw the straws here and take bets. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, sounds good. All right. Go ahead, Drew. It worked pretty well. Yeah. The pressure was down just a little bit on it, but it did work pretty well for him. So I'm impressed. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, I tell you what, especially with it being that old, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You don't, but that's the chance that you take. And in a fire situation, you want to, you don't want to take that chance because, you know, when it's a life or death situation, you want to make sure that thing's going to be able to work. situation where you're trying to knock the fire down to get you and your family out. That's the main thing. You want it to work to get that fire knocked down. You may not be trying to extinguish it, but you may just want to knock it down to get you and your family out. So you want to make sure that thing's going to work like it should. So kind of going back here to the whole situation that we just saw. Um, so what do you think? Do you think that that was a good demonstration? Do you think that we would have been safe had that been an actual fire or would it have been better to call the fire department? Absolutely always call the fire department first. 
that's one of the biggest mistakes people make. Because they have fire extinguishers in their home, oftentimes what they do is they go to grab that fire extinguisher first rather than calling the fire department. And that can delay us getting there, and that can also, by the time they do call the fire department, that can cause them to have a bigger fire by the time they do call us. And it also can cause them injuries such as smoke inhalation, burns, and so forth. So we definitely want them to call us. If they get at the fire foot before we get there, then when we get there, we're just going to give them a pat on the back and say, yay, great job, and everything's good to go. But we want to definitely be on our way to get there before anything gets out of hand. All right, well, another great way to prevent fires is having a smoke detector in your home, and you definitely want to have batteries in there, and I know that some folks want to take the batteries out and maybe put them in the TV remote, and unfortunately, that's a bad idea, and kind of um, take us through, you know, why it's important to always have batteries and to always check on the smoke uh, detectors. Yes, definitely. Check your smoke detectors at least monthly. Um, there are two different kinds that you see out there now. You do have your regular battery-operated that are in a lot of the older homes, um, and with your battery operated ones and with your regular ones, it does have a test button. And all you do is press the test button, you hold it in until it makes a beeping sound. Then you know it's working like it should. Uh, most of them take 9 volt batteries. You just change that 9 volt battery. This one is a little bit different because this one has what's called a 10 year lithium battery. These, you don't have to change the batteries in them for about 10 years. And at that point, all you do is take the whole thing down, chunk it. You get a new bat you get a new uh, smoke alarm. Um, the good thing is too, for anyone that lives in the high point area, just put a plug out there. If you don't have a smoke alarm, you can call us. We put one in for you for free. So that's what you need to do for your smoke alarms, though. Just check them, make sure that they work, because this right here is your best friend in a fire situation. This is what's going to get you up. This is what's going to get you out of there. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Captain Lynch, for coming thank on the you. show today. I enjoyed the demonstration, enjoyed talking to you, thank you. as it's well. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, guys, and I hope that you guys have a great holiday season. And for more information about the Kitty Fire Extinguishers, visit their website and see if you have the uh, damaged um, pre-called uh, bottle or not. And maybe they can even uh, replace one for you. All right, guys, we'll back to you in the studio. Madison and Grace. Thanks, Zach. That was amazing. So it's so important to know how to be safe in a fire, especially with the holidays coming. Many families are preparing to set up Christmas. 40 million kitty fire extinguishers are being recalled for not working properly. Over 134 million bottles are on the recall, including ones sold at Menards, Home Depot, and Walmart. It's honestly better to be safe than sorry, and Kitty will replace recalled fire extinguishers for free. You can contact the company through their website or by phone. Coming up after the break, we will take a look at Glassworks Studio in Asheville, North Carolina and the recent Triad Veggie Festival in Greensboro, North Carolina. the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. I've just been hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good. What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Welcome back to Triad News 360. I'm Graylin Glover. And I'm Madison Johnson. Madison, did you travel anywhere for Thanksgiving? I did. I actually went home to Charlotte to see my family. Really? That's so nice. Well, I saw that it's always busy around this time of year. Weekend, over the past decade, this has been the busiest weekend ever. Airports were jammed and there were many delayed flights for the crowds at the gates. 
The roads were not much better either. Bumper to bumper traffic, even with 70 mile per hour speed limits. AAA predicted that more than 50 million Americans were traveling over the holiday break. New York City was a very popular destination this year. That's right, on a clear and chilly day, it was time for the iconic Macy's Day Parade, my favorite. Balloons and bands floated and marched in the 91st annual celebration in New York City. And the Ohio University marching 110 clans in their green and white took up a large portion of the parade, along with high school bands from Lansing, Michigan. NBC is pleased with the success and made note that it's the highest rated non-sports program since the Academy's Awards last February. So you don't have to go to Macy's in New York for your Christmas shopping. Asheville, North Carolina has a lot of great shops with unique gift ideas. The Lexington Glass Works hard to create innovative hand blowing glass. Every piece is carefully crafted with long lasting techniques. The work is top notch and declared to be one of the Southeast, Southeast's most renowned arts destination. They have an open door culture which allows people to view glass blowing process, but in, a, un, but in an unusual way. Tried News 360 reporter Mackenzie Fisher has the story. The city mayor brought these local art to the museum. One small business combines all three. Lexington Glassworks in Asheville, North Carolina is a very successful glass blowing studio and gallery. Both locals and tourists crowd the studio each day to watch the live glass blowing process. The studio is run by two friends who met in college and studied glass blowing at Alfred University. Billy and Geoff decided to open up their business in Asheville due to the vibrant art culture and the rapid rise of tourism in the last 10 years. Recently, a bar was added in the studio where tourists can buy craft booze to drink while watching the creative process. The bar also makes considerable profit during the concert series that takes place at Lexington Glassworks Monthly. The studio becomes a stage during the evening for local musicians. All the glass for sale in the gallery is made in the shop, so make sure to pick something up on your way out. Make sure to add Lexington Glassworks to your Asheville bucket list. Although there is no glass blowing on Tuesdays, they are open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Monday through Saturday and 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. I'm really excited. This is definitely on my bucket list. And they have a five-star rating on Facebook. Oh, my gosh. If you want more information, be sure to visit their website. But not everyone spends their Thanksgiving mornings cooking in the kitchen. Three, two, one. This past Thanksgiving, thousands of people branched the 30-degree cold to participate in the five-mile run, Turkey Trot, at the St. Paul's Cathedral in Garden City, New York. People of all ages lined up at the starting line, dressing themselves and their pets in Thanksgiving attire. Even as the more serious runners crossed the finish line, many were just getting started. Back at the cathedral, waves of people were just beginning their turkey trot. For the not-so-serious runners, the annual Thanksgiving morning run has become a family tradition. It also gets some family members out of the house and from under the foot as turkey dinner preparations begin. Turkey trot racers turned out in record numbers everywhere this year. Then homes for the family got together for dinner. Coming turkey. And the upcoming Christmas treats. You might just need some help with the New Year's diet that, will you, that you promise yourself. There is help, and the Triad Veggie Fest in the Greensboro Farmers Club Market is a place to start. This festival is in support of educating the general public on plant-based dieting. Triad News 360 reporter Jennifer Brammer has a story and hope for your race line. <laughs>
The Triad Veg Fest thanked everyone for making the event a success via Facebook. Preparations are already being made for next year. Go to the Triad Veggie Fest Facebook page to see pictures and videos from the festival. Get your contact for ideas and for the date of next year's Veggie Fest. So what would it be like to talk to a music producer? Several students created that very opportunity for themselves recently. The High Point University Radio Department recently had the opportunity to go to Los Angeles, California, sponsored by Student Government Association and the School of Communications. Seven students networked with iHeartMedia and learned a lot about programming and branding. In addition, they spent time learning from Warner Brothers, Mike Darnell, inventor of reality TV, Two Developed American Idol, and Ellen. They interviewed music publisher and artist mentor Judy Sake, who developed Cheryl Crow, Gavin DeGraw, and Katy Perry. They also interviewed Julian Bur Burnett from NRG Recording Studios, who had produced Lincoln Mark, Miley Cyrus, Chris Brown, and more. They even got to tour YouTube. You know what, Madison? We should go to, like, join the radio department so we can go to LA. I was just thinking the same thing. That trip is such an amazing opportunity for students to network. It sure was. Coming up after the break, another Hollywood arrest. And belly bizarre art for women who are expecting a child. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. But with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercise, Abe. It just makes me hungry. With bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we're good. What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Welcome back to Triad News 360. I'm Graylin Glover. And I'm Madison Johnson. There's been a lot happening in Hollywood lately with many sexual harassment claims, and still there are many coming forward. Along with the losses of Malcolm Young, co-founder of rock band ACDC, and David Cassidy, best known for his role in the 70s sitcom The Partridge Family, every day there seems to be another headline from Hollywood. Yeah. Now there's a domestic arrest of Naya Rivera, who is best known for her role in Glee and that's been circulating the internet. I love Glee. Former Glee star Naya Rivera allegedly assaulted her husband in a West Virginia on Saturday night and was charged with a misdemeanor domestic battery early Sunday. Rivera's fa husband, Ryan Darsley, has said he, she had hit him in the head and a bottom lip while they were out with their child on a walk. Darcy provided video of the assault to the police and Rivera was arraigned at a county magistrate's court and released on bond after a brief court appearance. So Hollywood never appears to be without drama, honestly. I guess that's what keeps us watching. That's true. I'm not sure how artwork, how, I'm not sure how much artwork I want painted on me. <laughs> Some people don't mind. The artwork will only last for a short time. Triad News Birthwala hosted Baby Belly Bazaar at Greensboro Culture Center in the park. 
the celebration was open to an exciting and expectant group. Triad News reporter Liv Huff has the story of who got painted. Beautiful henna designs and glittering stars on her swollen belly. The first thing you see when you walk in will most likely be a pregnant woman burying her belly, getting custom art painted. Belly painting has become one of the most well-known features of the Baby Belly Bazaar. The festival is more than just a prenatal art gallery. The festival was founded by birth doula Kenny in the hopes of informing expectant mothers about different treatments and options outside of popular traditional medicine. So I just wanted to be able to gather all the resources in our area so that women could just walk around and... Aside from providing information, the bazaar has acupuncture therapists, water birth specialists, prenatal masseuses, and birth doulas. We offer um, educational, physical, and emotional support to women and families who are pregnant and in the early postpartum period. And being able to get our business out there and get in front of potential clients has really been very important as far as building our clientele base. For new moms and businesses, the bazaar is a great place for them to find each other such as Preferred Child Care, a company that specializes in finding nannies and babysitters. I am here with Preferred Child Care. We are a nanny agency located out in Jamestown, North Carolina. Um, our services are for the entire Piedmont Triad area, servicing them for guaranteed babysitting, part-time and on-call. And even individuals use the bazaar as a great place to network. Absolutely, yeah. I've been giving out a lot of business cards. I do a birthday party business, so eventually they'll, uh, they'll be clients of mine <laughs> for for something else. I do <laughs> magic, balloon twisting, and free swimming. <laughs> the Baby Belly Bazaar at the core is a place that offers support for soon-to-be mothers, especially first-time parents. It helps reassure mothers in a safe space and prepare them for exactly what to expect during their pregnancy. That honestly looks like a great way to learn more about safe pregnancy, birth, and infant care. And it seems like a lot of fun, especially for first-time moms. This is a great way to get more information. I agree. So for more information, visit the Triad Birth Doula website. Coming up after a break, a, a look at Chris's concert prep. And what's happening in Panther Sports. Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercise lately. I've just been hungry. Ooh, bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Welcome back to Triad News 360. I'm Graylin Glover. And I'm Madison Johnson. It's Christmas time in the city. With Christmas right around the corner, local High Point residents are getting ready for the High Point Christmas concert that takes place right here on campus. Putting on a holiday concert takes a lot of effort. I went backstage for a local group presentation. It's no secret that High Point University revs up for the holidays just as the clock strikes midnight on November 1st. Just one day after Halloween, it's clear HBU decks the halls as soon as socially acceptable. But there are some aspects of HBU that start spreading holiday cheer even earlier. Try late September. I'm Madison Johnson with more on the story. Life right now is going to matter. Right now what matters is the room you're in and the activity you're engaged in right here. Don't let your mind get somewhere else. Rehearsals for High Point University's holiday concert started immediately after their family weekend concert in mid-September. Drawing crowds of students and High Point residents, the annual concert has been the most exciting aspect of the Triad's holiday season for almost 10 years. HP vocalists like university and chamber singers rehearse as much as five times a week, 
to meet the demands of challenging and brilliantly intricate pieces that are soon paired with a full orchestra. Dr. Mark Ashley Foster says, These are important moments in their life, and this, you know, for the seniors this year, this will be their last holiday choral concert as an undergraduate. And so you just go into it knowing that it's there, and, and it makes, for me, it makes me want to do even better. I want to work harder. I want to, to make sure that it's a concert that they will look back on and be proud to be a part of. Students, especially music majors, dedicate a phenomenal amount of time to their choir rehearsals. But students like Matt Hollis and Maggie Collier say they wouldn't trade it. Uh, my favorite part about being involved in High Point's music department is probably the fact that I get to sing every day. My favorite part of working with High Point's music is all the people that I get to come into contact with. You know, there's some really awesome people in this department and this choir. Uh, like everyone's really passionate about what they're doing, and they really give their all every single time that we get together to make music. It's really nice to hone the craft of singing and uh, get to be more musical. And it's weird to think that this will be my last year getting to sing with people that I love and uh, getting to just do it without having to pay for this experience, you know. This year's holiday concert is expected to draw their usual record-breaking crowd on December 1st and 2nd at 7.30 p.m. to make this holiday season an extraordinary one. For HBU News, I'm Madison Johnson. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow, Madda, who knew that the choir started way back in September? I'm really excited to go and see their work pay off. I would be too. We should yeah. go. Let's do that. Oh my gosh, oh let's, my go gosh let's go together. Okay. Sounds good to me. So join holiday spirits filled downtown High Point last Sunday as the High Point Holiday Festival Parade marched down Main Street. Floats and other acts help spread the Christmas spirit. Even Santa's helpers were out handing candy. Members of the crowd dance in the streets to, to their favorite Christmas tunes. And let's not forget about the marching bands. After all, who doesn't love a good marching band? You know I play the drums. Are you serious? Yeah. Can you teach me? I mean, it might take a minute. Christmas is a very lonely and long day for children who are not thought of and have presents. Not all will be forgotten this year as students at High Point University are pitching in. It's called the Angel Tree Program. You can help by adopting an angel for Christmas and your contributions will pay for clothing, shoes, and presents for the kids who might not have anything this year. When a child who has very little opens a gift they were not expecting, Christmas becomes a day they will never ever forget. If you wish to help bring a smile to a child's face this Christmas, just contact the chapel at High Point University or your local Salvation Army. Lots of Panther sports action over the holiday break. That's right, joining us now live in the Triad News studio is Triad 360 sports reporter Dan Yakman. Dan, how did basketball do over the break? Well, Grayland, not as good as we'd like to see them do. Certainly, they're capable of better. Uh, they're down to pit right now, actually, as we speak. The High Point men's basketball team fell short at UNC Charlotte over Thanksgiving break. The final score at Charlotte was 70-67, dropping the Panthers' record to 2-3 and three on the season. One of HBU's leading scorers, Jihad Proctor, was out due to an ankle injury. Brandon Kamga had a career-high 26 points, but it was not enough to skinny the 49ers. The team looks to balance out its record tonight at Pittsburgh. The game will be televised on the ACC Network Extra. The High Point University women's basketball team kicked off a two-game road trip at Stenson on Monday. Sophomore Cameron Brown scored 15 points after the break to lead the Panthers to a 69-64 comeback victory. Brown finished the night with 24 points. HPU is now 3-2. Next up, High Point continues on the road on Wednesday to Norfolk State University. The High Point women's volleyball team was selected to the NCAA tournament as an at-large bid on Sunday night. The Panthers will be heading to Salt Lake City, Utah, where they will face Purdue this Thursday. High Point is the first volleyball team in the Big South Conference to collect an at-large berth onto the tournament. The Panthers posted a 19-match winning streak from early in September until they were defeated in the Big South Championship by Radford. This is also the first time HBU has advanced to the national tournament in back-to-back -back seasons. Pretty impressive. The High Point men's lacrosse team will begin <coughs> its 2018 campaign in January. This season, they will play four top 20 teams, including John Hopkins, UNC, Virginia, and preseason number one ranked Duke. HBU is coming off of a 4-10 record last year after losing several starting players to injury. The Panthers are returning a majority of their key players, including senior midfielder Peyton Garrett, senior attackman Jason Ashwood. 
After the holiday break, High Point will open with a scrimmage against UNC. The Panthers start their regular season at Duke on February 8th. The women's lacrosse schedule for the 2018 season has been released and will feature home games against Duke, UNC, and Notre Dame. High Point finished last season with an undefeated record in the regular season. Along with the winning, winning a Big South championship, the Panthers went on to welcome the first High Point team to win a game in the NCAA tournament, defeating Towson State before losing to eventual champions Maryland in the second round. The High Point University baseball team will start their 2018 season on February 16th against James Madison, part of a tough non-conference schedule that includes five NCAA tournament teams from last season and 2016 national champion Coastal Carolina. High Point is looking to build off of a strong 2017 campaign in which they finished fourth in the conference and were a game away from the Big South Conference Tournament Final. The Panthers returned nine starters and welcomed 12 newcomers to the team. That's all for Panther Sports. Madison, Graylin. Thank you, Zach. Thank you for the update. That's all we have tonight for Triad News 360. I'm Graylin Glover. And I'm Madison Johnson. Good night, High Point. Good night.